Hello students. Uh, today we are going to understand the concept of prothrombin time in short PT and international normalized ratio in short INR. Now uh, first of all what is prothrombin time? Prothrombin time is a global coagulation assay or it is a global coagulation test. It measures time taken for the blood to clot. Important to note that prothrombin time is the time taken by the blood to clot when the clotting is initiated by the activation of extrinsic pathway of coagulation. Now as we all know that there are two pathways by which coagulation is initiated. One is the intrinsic pathway, another is the extrinsic pathway. And both these pathways, they stimulate the clotting factor 10. So clotting factor 10 is stimulated to 10A and which further results in the activation of clotting factor 2 that is prothrombin to thrombin, fibrinogen to fibrin and finally a clot is produced. Now it is a prothrombin time that evaluates the integrity of uh, clotting factors uh, 7, clotting factor 7, uh, then clotting factor 10, uh, clotting factor 2, 5 and 1. So it is a prothrombin time uh, that evaluates the integrity of extrinsic and common coagulation pathway. So it is a prothrombin time uh, is the time taken by the blood to clot when the clotting is initiated by the activation of extrinsic pathway of coagulation. Now let's uh, recapitulate the extrinsic pathway of coagulation of blood. Now extrinsic pathway of blood coagulation is uh, initiated by the external injury to the wall of blood vessel. For example, due to a trauma, due to an accident. Now this injured uh, wall of the blood vessel releases a clotting factor, that is a uh, tissue factor. Now this tissue factor, it uh, activates clotting factor 7 to 7a. Now this clotting factor 7a, it further complexes with the tissue factor. And this complex is responsible for the activation of clotting factor 10 to 10a. Further. 10 is responsible for the activation of prothrombin to thrombin in the presence of calcium and clotting factor 5a. Further, the thrombin activates fibrinogen to fibrin. And finally, fibrin mash network is produced in which are entangled the platelets and other blood cells, which results in the formation of clot. So it is a prothrombin time, uh, that is a time taken by the blood to clot when the clotting is initiated due to the activation of extrinsic pathway of uh, coagulation and it is the uh, prothrombin time that evaluates the functioning of clotting factor 7, 10, uh, clotting factor 2, 5 and 1 which are involved in extrinsic pathway and in the common pathway. Now as we all know about warfarin, Warfarin is a, a vitamin uh, K antagonist. It is an oral uh, anticoagulant and it inhibits the synthesis of clotting factor uh, 2, 7, 9 and the 10. Now, uh, whenever a patient is on warfarin therapy, it is essential to monitor the dosage of warfarin and, on, and this should be done on a regular basis. Now, prothrombin time is determined in order to monitor the therapy with the warfarin. Now let's uh, discuss the method by which uh, prothrombin time is determined. Now first of all a sample of a patient's blood is collected uh, by the puncture of vein and uh, blood is collected in a tube containing sodium citrate. Now it is a sodium citrate that uh, precipitates the calcium ions presence, present in the blood and thus uh, calcium ions are removed from the blood and the blood become decalcified. Now further, uh, plasma is separated uh, from this uh, decalcified blood. Uh, so the plasma is here, the uh, decalcified plasma. So this is a test tube. Uh, this test tube shows the uh, citrated plasma, that is a decalcified plasma uh, in the yellow color. Now further to this, uh, thromboplastin, that is a source of uh, tissue factor, is added to the, uh, this is a thromboplastin, that is a source of the tissue factor is added to the uh, decalcified plasma. Now uh, tissue factor uh, initiated initiates the extrinsic pathway of coagulation. Now as we all know that calcium ions are required for coagulation and citrated plasma is uh, decalcified it has no calcium. So therefore excess of the calcium chloride is added to the plasma. Now as soon as the calcium chloride is added 
the extrinsic pathway of coagulation is initiated and the blood starts coagulating. The zeprothrombin time is the time calculated uh, from the addition of calcium chloride to the formation of clot. And normal prothrombin time ranges from 11 to 13.5 uh, seconds. Uh, that is a normal, normally the extrinsic pathway of coagulation takes about 11 to 13.5 seconds for the blood to clot. Now, as we have already discussed earlier, administration of oral uh, anticoagulants that is a warfarin will increase the prothrombin time. Because it is a warfarin that inhibits the clotting factor uh, to uh, then 7 uh, and 10. Now let's talk about the clinical significance of prothrombin time. Uh, the first and the most important is the mon monitoring of oral anticoagulant therapy with warfarin. Now whenever the patient is on warfarin, it is essential to determine the prothrombin time. Then uh, decrease in the clotting factor a decrease in the synthesis of clotting factor 7 increases the prothrombin time. A deficiency of vitamin K uh, also increases the prothrombin time. Now, prothrombin time also determines the liver synthetic function uh, because it is a liver which is responsible for synthesis of most of the clotting factors. And fall in the liver synthetic function increases the prothrombin time. And further in uh, disseminated intravascular coagulation, there is excessive co coagulation and this condition is also monitored by the determination of prothrombin time. Prothrombin time reduces in uh, disseminated intravascular coagulation. Now let's uh, talk about a very important concept that is the international normalized ratio in short INR. Now INR is calculated from the prothrombin time. Now, uh, as we have already understood uh, that uh, the results of prothrombin time are expressed in seconds. Now, here important to note that the results of the prothrombin time are also expressed in the form of a ratio that is termed as international normalized ratio. Now, uh, these results of the prothrombin time, they vary from lab to lab due to variations in the quality of uh, thromboplastin that is the reagent and the different devices used. So in order to standardize the results across different laboratories across the uh, entire world, the World Health Organization recommends the use of INR that is the International Normalized Ratio. Now INR is calculated by uh, the formula given over here where the PT test is a tested prothrombin time that is a uh, prothrombin time of the patient on uh, warfarin therapy. PT normal is a normal prothrombin time as we have already discussed uh, and the range is from 11 to 13.5 seconds. ISI stands for International Sensitivity Index. Now uh, this is uh, obtained from the package insert of the reagent that is a thromboplastin and in most of the cases ISI is found to be 1. Now normal international normalized ratio range is 0.8 to 1.1 that is uh, for a patient not on therapy. Now for the patient on warfarin, INR should be between 2 and 3. Now let's understand this with the help of example. Uh, let's say if a PT test uh, that means the uh, prothrombin time of a patient on warfarin therapy is 25. Then INR of the patient is 25 divided by 11 because 11 is a normal prothrombin time. Uh, the INR comes out to be 2.27. So the INR of the patient on the prothrombin therapy is 2.27. Now this 2.27 lies uh, between 2 to 3. That means uh, the dose given to the uh, patient uh, is fine. There is no need to increase or reduce the dose. Now again important to note that if the international normalized ratio uh, for a patient on warfarin is more uh, than 3, that shows that uh, there is high risk of bleeding and the dose of warfarin should be reduced. On the other hand, if the international normalized ratio is less than 2, that shows that effective anticoagulant effect is not obtained and therefore dose of warfarin should be increased. Very important to know uh, that uh, INR is a concept uh, which is applicable only on patients taking warfarin. Right. So this is all about the concept of prothrombin time and the concept of international normalized ratio. Now if you uh, find the video helpful, kindly like, subscribe and share this video. You can write your questions in the comment section. I will answer your doubts and thanks for watching the video.